it can be like big gifts, little gifts, they're all big gifts. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. So this morning I am sharing about um, integrating into a new church. Because we are still, um, even though we're just over a year old, still very much a new church. And um, I was just thinking about uh, the message this morning, and I was thinking about, oh my gosh, has it only been a week um, since we were here last? Because it feels like it's been so much longer. And I was thinking about, why does it feel like it's been so long? And I thought, you know, it's because I miss everybody. Uh, and because, uh, and I thought that was such a good sign that I thought, I really, you know, why does it feel like it's been forever since we've all been together? And, uh, and I thought, it's because I enjoy being in everybody's company. And, um, and when anybody's not able to be here, um, as several aren't able to be here this morning, um, they're missed. Yes. And, um, and I know we say that online, but I really mean it. Um, and even though some of you I've only known uh, and are just getting to know, I've only known many of you for a short time, um, I, I feel like we're connecting um, relatively quickly, um, considering. And, um, and yet, there's still a lot more connecting to come and um, to happen. Uh, and I was um, also thinking that one of the reasons it may have seemed like it was such a long time is because this last week has been really crammed in with all sorts of busyness. Um, as I think everybody knows, Ruth and I moved house. Um, and again, I still have that picture of uh, little British cartoon people picking up a house and moving it somewhere. It's um, <laughs> made the same move in America. Um, but um, yes, it was really, it's, you know, it's been a, a jam packed week with. You know, finishing packing up the old house and bringing everything to the new house and trying to get it all unpacked in the new house and um, yeah, yeah, so that's been crammed in and I think that not only has my time been crammed in this last week But our living situation has been crammed in as well um, I'm going to share a couple of photos of our home <laughs> <laughs> So this is our dining room on a good day. Um, yeah, it looks a lot worse than that at the moment, actually. Um, and this is our guest bedroom, which um, looks about the same now as it does in that photo. Um, and this is both of these. This is one side and the other side of our study. Um, that side over there is eventually supposed to be sort of like a dressing area because we don't have much storage. Um, so we're gonna put a wardrobe or two there eventually. But um, yeah, so it was interesting trying to get ready for, for the message this morning, trying to get our study set up. And uh, as we were starting to put things in place, we realized certain things that we measured for and thought were gonna work, don't work. They don't actually fit. I don't know if it's because our measurements were wrong or just because certain rooms were configured you know, differently than, than we accounted for doors in different places and, and whatnot. So with our study, our plan was that we would have two good-sized desk setups like we've had in our last two houses. So I've had a pretty big desk setup, um, and Ruth has had a good-sized desk setup as well. But we're realizing that's not going to work, and so we're only going to be able to have one desk setup. It'll still be a, a good-sized one, but it will only be one. And so to figure that all out, um, I started integrating all of the different um, things that Ruth and I had separately in our desks. So instead of having two full desk setups, they'll just be one. And so I thought, well, we don't need um, all of these pens to be here and there. We need them all in one place. And so I was thinking, especially as I was sorting through these countless pens that we have between us, pens and pencils. But you can never find a pen in our house that you need. <laughs> there, there are like hundreds of them. I mean, hundreds. Um, so, but pens, markers, Sharpies, pencils, highlighters, we've got tons, right? And so I was sorting through all of these things and, and, you know, and trying to figure out if any of them didn't work. And I was kind of hoping that a lot of them wouldn't work and I could just talk to them, but I think I found one that didn't work. Uh, actually, it was just empty. It was just an empty shell, so, <laughs> so it couldn't work. But, um, and I just was thinking about, as I was integrating all of the office stuff and getting um, the desk set up, I was thinking about us. I was thinking about us as a church. I was thinking about the fact that 
um, so many of us come from different church backgrounds. And um, I don't think anyone here this morning, but um, at times some came from uh, no previous church background as well. Um, we've got people from uh, the Apostolic Church, people from various um, Church of England congregations, people from Baptist backgrounds, um, and from independent churches. And we're all coming together from different backgrounds um, as far as our styles and uh, forms of Christian worship. Um, and we're coming from different nations as well. Um, when everybody's here, we've got, of course, England. I think some are maybe originally from Wales, I'm not sure, um, but I believe so. Um, we've, I don't think there are any Scots or Irish uh, um, associated at all. Um, we've got people from Nigeria, from South Africa, and of course me from the USA. And so we've got different nationalities, different cultures. Um, you know, of course, all of you that do things a little bit weird because you're not from America, you know, uh, strange <laughs> foods, you know, um, raisins and everything. Um, <laughs> um, and, you know, and then people have different mother tongues as well, um, you know, and different accents, uh, different isms. I'm sure I say things that you don't understand sometimes um, or, and, or that you have to really think about. Um, and I hear things all the time that I don't understand. I had a conversation yesterday with one of Ruth's coworkers who, um, she was raised mostly in the US, but um, is originally from Canada. Um, and now she's lived over here for a, a handful of years going to university. And um, her boyfriend is from here. Um, and she was saying that he pronounced um, tortoise, uh, tortoise, not tortoise. Tor he, he says tortoise. And, um, and she said, Ruth, how do you say that word? And you know, how do you say it, Ruth? Tortoise. Yeah. And it, from the US, we say tortoise. Um, and you know, but he says tortoise. <laughs> and, and she said, have you ever heard that before? I've never heard that before in my life, <laughs> unless somebody's joking. Um, but apparently it's a thing, you know, so we all come from different backgrounds, have different styles and approaches to things. Um, and when everybody's here, we have just about every age group represented as well, which is amazing. And it's, it's wonderful because um, just as God brought about the circumstances, um, and surely in a, an amazing way, for us to find our new home, um, I think God has been doing an amazing thing bringing us all together, establishing this new church. Um, and it will take time, though, for us to begin to integrate and to really become a, a good, solid community um, and a really strong church family. But I believe that's very much what the Lord is um, beginning to work out. Um, and um, I was thinking about this, and I was thinking about some of the issues that came up um, when the church, not New Nation Church Shrewsbury, but when the original church was first coming together. And all throughout Scripture, um, if you look, there are all sorts of circumstances where the early church had problems and issues that came up because they had people coming from different backgrounds, who had different cultures, different languages, different customs, and, um, and it caused issues. Um, thankfully, I'm not aware that we've had any issues here yet, but I was just thinking, okay, well, you know, we need to be aware of this. And, um, and as we're learning and understanding and growing together, um, we need to have grace for one another and realize that we all do come from different backgrounds and we can learn something, I think, from what happened when um, the very, um, from the very beginnings of the church. And uh, so I'm gonna um, read what happened when the early church was forming shortly after Jesus ascended into heaven and later sent the Holy Spirit um, and the church was birthed. Um, it wasn't long until there were more than just Jews who were counted among the faithful in Christ um, when there were people from many different nations and cultures and backgrounds who started coming to faith. And um, when we hear that, we think, how wonderful. But for the original disciples, um, for the group who had been the 12, but then Judas was no longer with them, suddenly there were the 11, um, it was tricky for them to figure out. Oh, there's my office, <laughs> as of late last night, at least the left side. The right side still not looking so good. Uh, so, but see, it is coming together. So there's hope. Right. Um, 
cut off a little bit there. Hopefully you can read along with me. So the scriptures, we read this, and this is Jesus speaking. But you shall re receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. And then we jump ahead a little bit um, to the following chapter in Acts, and we see the beginning of the church. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues, as a fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone, had heard, everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues and the wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? We see that God the Holy Spirit did exactly what God, as Jesus Christ, told them he would do. He empowered them to be his witnesses to people from many different languages, from many nations, from many different cultures, different customs. Many, many, many people from all over the world came to faith and were counted among the number of the faithful in Christ that day. The church grew. And now it was no longer just Jews, but there were also proselytes, which simply means converts from other religions. And now there was something different, something new that had to be sorted out. There were people who, according to Jewish beliefs, were not clean and could not become clean for several generations. They ate forbidden foods. They didn't have their hair or their clothes worn according to Jewish customs. They worked in jobs that Jewish people wouldn't do because they were considered unclean, like raising pigs or being leather tanners. And even worse than that, there were some Samaritans in the mix. And they were particularly hated enemies of the Jews from hundreds and hundreds of years of history dating back to the time of Ezra and Nehemiah. And all of these people were now supposed to figure out how to worship together and how to live out their newfound faith in Christ together. They had a lot of work to do to sort out and to begin to integrate into a new community. Further on in Acts, in chapter 6, we read this. Now in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Now this is just one of many, many problems that started coming to light. And this problem was particularly about the food distribution that was going on to the widows and others in need in the church. 
but the culturally Hebrew Christians who were kind of running the show were not treating the culturally Greek Christian widows in the same way as they treated their own. And the leaders of the early church, they met about this, and they decided that they would assign the food distribution to what became the first deacons in the church, which was a great solution. And as the church grew, there was need for more people to do more of the work of the church ministry. And so, again, this was a great solution that they came up with, but it did have a downside to it. And the downside to it is that the leaders of the church didn't actually have to deal with the reality that there was a divide in the church. They sort of gave that responsibility over to the deacons. And what happened is that that divide that was highlighted here very early on be continued and it manifested in different ways and it began to grow. There were the Jewish Christians from Judea and Galilee who were in the crowd and then who were part of the in crowd, excuse me, but then there was everybody else. And the division continued to rear its ugly head time and time again. There are way, way too many examples from the book of Acts through all of the letters for me to go into. But one issue was that Paul would highlight the problems. And the problems that Paul highlighted um, had to do with a nickname that he came up for those who wanted the non-Hebrew Christians to be like the Hebrew Christians. And he came up with a nickname for them and he called them the circumcision. And um, I'm paraphrasing here, but at one point he was so frustrated with them, he said that um, they were causing so much grief and so much trouble and they were um, keeping people from fully coming to faith that he said that he wished that they would cut their entire members off. Uh, <laughs> it was that serious of an issue uh, for a man to say that, you know. <laughs> That's a big deal, you know, because we don't speak those words lightly ever, 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 um, right? <laughs> so um, Paul also pointed out that Peter was a hypocrite over the issue of the differences between the Hebrew Christians and the non-Hebrew Christians. You see, the Hebrew Christians wouldn't eat certain things, uh, pork in particular, but the non-Hebrew Christians, they didn't have that cultural issue. So they would eat pork, they would eat stone fruit, um, they would eat a mixture of things in their foods that um, Jewish people aren't allowed to eat, that were considered unclean. Um, and so when Peter was with um, either a mixed group of believers or with just the non-Hebrew believers, he would join in and he would eat with them. And then when certain influential Jewish believers were present, he suddenly behaved differently, especially when James, the brother of Jesus, who was the head of the church, was present. Peter suddenly started to shun the non-Hebrew Christians. And so Paul, rightly so, called him out as a hypocrite. hypocrite. Yes, I can speak. Um, <laughs> and um, there were all sorts of other issues that started coming up. So the circumcision, they tried to get all of the new believers who were not from a Jewish background to get circumcised. And these adult men were like, whoa, wait a minute, what's this all about? Um, I don't think a knife is appropriate anywhere near there. Um, and, you know, and... The leaders of the church, they had all met and they had all said, no, this isn't a thing. Uh, they don't have to do that. Circumcision is not about the flesh as a Christian. It's about the heart. Um, it's about um, having the hard parts of your heart removed um, so that you can be tenderhearted towards Christ um, and toward other people. And, um, and yet, there were people trying to push the Old Testament rules and regulations that Jesus fulfilled he didn't do away with them, but he fulfilled them. He um, made it so that he was the fulfillment of each and everything that had to be done. And he released us from that bondage. 
And it was being said that um, the Jewish believers were wanting to put the new believers from other cultures back under the bondage of the law. But Jesus Christ came to bring us freedom and to give us abundant life and to deliver us, not to put us back under that yoke. And remember, Scripture says that um, Jesus' yoke is light or pleasing. Um, and I just thought it was really helpful for us to see that um, when we start to realize that, hold on, you know, I'm from a Baptist background, or I'm from a, a, an Anglican background, or I'm from an apostolic background, or from some other background, um, and you're used to a certain thing, and somebody does or says something differently than you're accustomed to, um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. We all have so much that we can learn from each other, and they, we all have so much that we can contribute together um, to help one another grow. I thought it would be helpful to share the vision and mission and purpose of New Nation Church International, um, in, if you aren't familiar with it. The vision of New Nation Church International is to see God uniting his people of every nation, tribe, and tongue to worship him in spirit and truth in local congregations throughout all of the earth. And now many of our congregations in other parts of the world are in areas where the only people who live there are people who were born and raised there and families have been in the same areas for generation upon generation. Um, but um, I thought it was quite interesting that you know, I'm American and my wife Ruth is British um, in South Sudan. Um, the uh, um, Pastor Alex, who oversees the South Sudanese churches, he's South Sudanese, his wife is Ugandan. Um, and in India, they're, they're, you know, Kana and Kurthi are both um, local to that part of India. Um, but um, already in, in our leadership, we see a bit of mixing of cultures. And, um, and I just thought here in New Nation Church Shrewsbury, I think it's so wonderful that we're seeing a mixing of different cultures and backgrounds. And so we see the vision of New Nation Church International happening within this local congregation. And I love it. Ruth and I talk about it quite often, how um, amazing it is what God is doing here and how blessed we are um, by the diversity of backgrounds and cultures um, that are represented here. Lo absolutely love it. I mean, this is like my dream come true. I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Our mission is to make disciples of people from every nation, tribe, and tongue, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that Jesus taught. And, um, and again, <clears throat> Some, some organizations, churches, um, will have a mission or a purpose, um, or use that interchangeably. We have both a mission and a purpose, um, because we believe our mission is something that we're called to do um, before Jesus returns. Um, and of course, um, we don't know the day or the hour when he will return. Um, he may return a thousand years from now, um, but until he does, that we are to share the gospel with people from all different backgrounds, from every nation, tribe, and tongue. Um, and we want to see people from all different backgrounds coming to faith, coming together, learning what Jesus taught, and, um, and living the lives that Jesus came to give them um, and to give all of us um, as he desires, and because we know that he is good and his ways are right and true. And... Um, and so we are very happy and pleased and desire to see people from different backgrounds coming together. And our purpose is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, strength, mind, and soul, and to love other people as the Lord our God loves us. And the reason we have a purpose in addition to a mission is because we believe that this is eternal. And we believe our purpose won't change, um, even when we're with the Lord in heaven, that we are called to uh, love him. 100% with all who he's made us to be. Um, and that we're still called to love other people just as the Lord God loves us. And I think about what was happening in the formation of the early church. And I think about how um, those first two things, the vision and the mission of New Nation Church International, those were happening in the early church. Um, those are happening now, today. Um, but it was the last part 
where they were having real difficulty. It was the loving one another. They were learning and understanding how to love God, but they were having a hard time loving other people as God loved them. And I just think it's so important for us as we begin to um, get to know one another and integrate together and uh, learn people's different styles of praise and worship, um, different styles of um, reading, of speaking, um, different foods and cultures, um, different isms, that we really give each other grace, that we offer understanding, and that we seek to come together and to integrate as a new community that thrives so that the presence of God, who is love, is so tangible at New Nation Church Shrewsbury that as we do that mission of sharing the gospel with people of different nations, tribes, and tongues of different cultures, they come to a place where they can tell that there is love love for one another, and that they are loved, and that they are welcome, and that they will be nurtured and cared for and built up and taught so that we can worship the Lord with an honest heart, fully loving him and glorifying him in the way that he deserves. Amen? Amen. So it's a short and simple message today. Um, but we're going to be sharing in communion, and I wanted to make sure we have plenty of time to do that. And um, and think about how how can we love one another better? How can we love more? I'm going to give a, a plug to our new members' classes. I know some people here have finished the new members' classes, and we had hoped to have a um, a, a celebration of those who. Um, or just have decided to become members of New Nation Church Shrewsbury um, on the 19th, but so many people were away or, or not able to come that we postponed that. Um, I am planning on scheduling a new round of new members' classes, hopefully beginning the middle of this month. Um, but as you saw the state of our home, I don't think we'll be able to host it. Um, so if there's anybody who would be willing to host us, Mandy and Kevin again, um, wonderful. <laughs> well, you know how it works because you hosted the last half. Um, and there are a few who missed a couple of classes. Um, you can either um, get together with me and um, we can meet for, um, for a long lunch um, and, um, and I can fill you in individually on in the classes that you missed. Um, or if you're able to um, join in on the, the classes that will start um, mid-February, um, Mandy and Kevin, I'll, I'll get with you and, and decide. It'll be either on Monday or a Tuesday because hands... Um, excuse me, uh, a Monday or a Wednesday, because hands seem, seem to show that those were the two best days. Um, and so, um, so you can jump in and, and finish the sessions that you missed if you missed some in the first round. Um, and I'm very excited. And this week I'm meeting with a couple of ladies. Um, hopefully, if, if they're well by then, they're, they were ill this morning, um, about baptism. Um, and so um, there should be some baptisms coming soon. Um, so very exciting times. And um, the new members classes is, are also a great way to begin to integrate more mm -hmm. um, into our church family. Mm -hmm. um, so a little plug for that, and I'm going to hand it over to Ruth, who's going to lead us in communion.